All right, guys, so I am here at uh, the island, Airsoft Island, Croatia, and my teammate is running the G5 GHK. I asked him all the important questions. He's an experienced GBBR user, so he's really demanding. He knows what he's doing and he doesn't speak English. So that's why I'm here and not with him. Uh, you know my format, experience from the field. This is kind of it. So I have my notes right here and I'm gonna walk you through this gun. Mostly the stuff that you cannot read on the website or it's hard to find, so I hope it will help. So let's start with the build quality in general. The body is full plastic, which is something I actually like because it, it is a good plastic and it's not wobbling at all. Definitely better than most WE guns. Like you can see like nothing. There is zero, zero wobble. The pins are in there nice and secure. I would actually need a tool like my Leatherman to take it out. I'm gonna show you later. So everything is nice and solid. However, it has this plasticky feel or, or sound to it. Not like feel, of course, it feels plasticky because it is plastic, but... So there is not this typical ringing at the end when you shoot or when you rack the, the bolt like this. Um, I don't mind that. Uh, if you are more into the realism, like this metal feel and, and the sound, Probably not for you, but uh, let's continue with the other stuff. I'll leave that up to you to decide. There is no wobble. Uh, this gun is completely stock. There has been no change made to this one, not even a bucking. The only thing he has done is epoxy mod, which is something that is known for the G5s because apparently they tend to break. So epoxy mod means he just filled these parts usually they are like ribs uh, you fill them with epoxy or some really strong glue and then this should last longer there have been reports that this thing is like breaking honestly i think they fixed it by now uh, this information is probably quite old i wouldn't be too worried about it um, however epoxy mod something something to consider perhaps other than that this gun is completely stock now we continue with hop-up adjustment hop-up adjustment is not toolless you need something like this allen key and you just go into this hole right here and there is a rotary style hop-up so if i push it away from me i'm actually increasing the hop-up so i literally just stick it in there i increase the hop-up if i am decreasing the hop-up i kind of have to under like i have to kind of force it like this like leverage it it's a little bit hard to go lower um, because you usually just put too much force on it and you spin it around and the hop up is everywhere decent solution i actually have it on my vfc similarly i just have it from the bottom they have it from the top and you don't have to you don't have to do anything you don't have to machine uh, the part here i like that it's not a bad implementation of a hop up decently precise and the adjustment is also quite fine so it's not bad i like the hop up trigger now we go onto the onto the weird ish stuff when i when i shoot it, it there is no clear wall there is like i'm actually going to turn this way so i can see it like I can feel something right here and then it's just movement, movement, movement and then it just breaks. There is no wall to it whatsoever. Uh, not a big fan to be honest. I like real steel triggers. Uh, this is not it. And the reset, uh, that's also something I'm not that big of a fan because when I reset it actually pushes my finger all the way to the front so I cannot stay at the wall that is actually not there. Hard to describe but I, ho I hope you, you know what I mean. So when I reset now it almost doesn't want to go forward, but it does, kinda. And now you see it just pushes my finger all the way to the front, which is kinda weird. Like I cannot just stay on the trigger. It just pushes me all the way forward because the hammer, it's, it's, there are weird angles. I already have an idea how to modify this to make it, this perfect, but this is a stock gun. I'm reviewing a stock gun. So the trigger, Kind of hard to control properly. I'm actually gonna shoot a few rounds. Do we have a BB in there? No. It's very, I cannot get right on the wall. It's just uh, not precise enough for me. I just don't know where the wall is because there is no proper feedback. 
Anyway, that is the trigger. It's not terrible. You can definitely play with it. Sides. It comes with sides, I believe, and these are decent. I like the implementation. You will probably not use them, but I just uh, thought it's worth mentioning. I do like the sides. Uh, accuracy. All right, this is a stock gun and I'm shooting 0.4 gram BBs, which is perfect for gas ball back rifles and it can hop it. The accuracy is great. There is nothing to complain about. Like I said, a friend of mine, he's an experienced GBBR player and he is demanding this is perfectly fine as it is stock, no modifications. It is precise, it is accurate, it's good, it shoots good. 0.4 gram BBs, talking about them, you can overhop them. With the stock hop up, you can overhop 0.4 gram BBs so they fly up. If you don't want that, you can also make them drop. So the adjustment on this, when it comes to hop up, thumbs up. Shooting experience, all right. Like I said, it is a full plastic gun, so... And there we go, um, I actually... That's my next point. When you have a BB in the chamber, it will always fall out when you rack the bolt. Actually, I'm gonna just show you right now. So, empty chamber, BB in the chamber, and now it will just fall out. Always. So the hop-up doesn't hold the BB inside. Is it a big deal? I actually think it's a good thing because it prevents you from double feeding it, potentially damaging the nozzle. So every time you do this, BB will fall out. You don't have to do this like blowing into it. So uh, I think that's a plus uh, for most people. But I'm used to something else. The, my BBs in my guns always stay in. Just one thing that surprised me. Okay, shooting experience. Like I said, um, it is full plastic, so there is not this typical ding, ding, the metal, metalness in it, but it does sound good. And I can hear the spring ringing quite a long time. I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna tell you when I stop hearing the, the spring. I can still feel the vibrations. Okay, now it stopped. So the vibrations are there, you will be able to feel them. Uh, is that a bad thing? I don't think so. I actually don't care that much. Man, the BBs actually fly nice and straight. There is no up, down. It, it is just one line. I, I already like this. This is a nice gun. I would actually compare it to WEKAC, which is one of my favorites from the WE lineup, in a, in a plastic body and, and less things to do to it to make it shoot good. This is stock and it already shoots good. So it's kind of the same form factor. It is lightweight. I, I do like this. Full auto consistency. Since this is a GHK, the full auto is actually pretty damn consistent. Bolt locks back. Also something rare to see, uh, especially with WE guns. Pretty, pretty nice. And it is consistent. It doesn't fly up, down. It is just like semi, just consistent straight line. I like that. Yes, the safety is ambidextrous, as you can see from the left and from the right as well. And I do like how it feels. It clicks nicely in place, just like that. So, when you are in the game and you want to do it properly, you have it always on safe. And when you have contact, you just flip it down and then you put it back on, flip it down, you put it back on. That's how I do it. Um, and this safety supports this play style. It is nice and tactile. And also it's not too long, like it's not bothering me on my trigger finger right here. I can feel it, it's there, but it's not too long on the right side. On the left, uh, it is the same size, I have no issues using that safety. Now the bad part about this, there is no end pass. So the nozzle comes uh, with the rifle, you cannot adjust it. Now right now it's shooting 1.7 joules with 0.4 gram BBs on propane, which means basically green gas with just no, no oil in it. And it has 1.7 joules. Adjustability would be really nice. I wish GHK have done that, but you cannot adjust it. If you are slightly over the limit, there is nothing you can do. They do offer three different variants. This is the standard, then you can go lower and you can go high, high velocity. I don't know how they call it, like more powerful nozzle, but you have to change the nozzle. You cannot just stick an Allen key in there, turn it, adjust it. So tough, tough. And as far as I know, it is not easy to make an end pass for the GHK um, lineups. There is actually a way to make this somewhat adjustable. You can 
drill a hole somewhere here and put a set screw and the more you tighten it the more it will go into the flow of the gas which makes it adjustable but I don't like this solution because it interferes a little bit with the actual system but I mean if it works it ain't stupid I haven't tried it but I know guys do it so either from the side or somewhere here or another way uh, you could put a hollow insert inside and make the diameter of this a little bit smaller which also prevents from too much gas going out makes it less powerful so just a regular end pass from the front would be would be better but hey there is ways you can try them if it works it ain't stupid this is how it looks the bolt weight is actually nice uh, it's kind of like the WEKAC PDW pretty nice it's it's fine it's not too light it's not too heavy it's not the snappiest one but it's also not like slow moving bolt I do like the the looks of this one and it looks also like there is not too much wear happening right now this is the perfect power for most of the fields i play at if that wouldn't be the case it would bother me check out the options right now 1.7 joules with 40s consistent power output yes that goes with the accuracy it is one line so there is no there is no spikes in joules there is no drops it, it is just shooting nice and consistent that pretty much sums up this rifle i really do like it it reminds me of the scorpion evo uh, that i actually own in nine millimeter and i just love that rifle so i love this one the only issue i have is the end pass no adjustability at least not out of the box now when i'm when i'm shooting it and i've been handling it and uh, i saw my friend playing with it i'm kind of kind of tempted because it is it is just a it is just a cool rifle and it shoots great with no mods i mean come on that's something you don't see that often